ahead and come on in. Don't worry about that, but I want to start in prayer. We always need that. But Father God, we just ask you today, Lord, and Father God, you'll pray that you'll I pray but touch our hearts, that Lord will be in a, a heart of prayer today, that we'll be in a mindset of, of growing closer to you. And I pray, God, that everything that's in our heart and our mind right now, that we get a focus on you. And that the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow will be upon each and every one. Pray for the sick and suffering today. So many people we just ask for each and every one in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Uh, a few things I want to share with you before we get going real good. Uh, remember our Thanksgiving service coming up November the 17th. There's also a chili supper coming up before that, actually, on the 15th. That'll be on a, is that a Friday night, more likely? Okay, Friday night, and that'll be two days before that. But uh, anyway, Pat has asked that we could use people to make chili on that, too. If anybody can help with that, let her know. Uh, and then going back to the Thanksgiving service, that'll be two days later, the same weekend on the 17th. And that's on a Sunday night at 6 p.m., uh, that will be sponsored by the North Clark Ministerials Association, so that's with all the ministers. I'm a part of that, and even the president of that, but at the same time, it's going to be here at North Charleston Church of God, and all churches are invited to, to attend at this time. We'll also be doing a love offering. That's not what it's only about, but the love offering will be going to Samaritan's Purse to help with these natural disasters. Again, that's what the buckets that are around here for. If you want to put something in early, you can, but that'll be for that. But if you want to wait, again, we'll, we'll be doing a, a love offering just for that that night. And uh, we'll be having a guest speaker, which he's known around here. Mike Wall used to pastor the Hibernian Presbyterian Church, I believe. Uh, he's been in Florida. He's moved back. His wife had passed away, unfortunately. He's going to be our guest speaker, and then we'll be doing communion with all that gather that night. Uh, having a, a heart for the kingdom of God. So uh, pray for that service and also pray if you desire to be given what God might lay on your heart. I'll not let, do that. God will have to do that. Also, tomorrow will be our men's meeting at 7 p.m. Tuesday night will be the women's meeting at 6 p.m. And then also remember Tuesday to get out there and vote. And uh, God knows this country needs something to, to go forth in it. And again, I'm not telling you how to vote this vote if you haven't already. So, again, that's some of the things that we want to mention. Uh, Willie Fields texted me this morning. Her and Doug, well, Doug is not doing well at all, so I think you see he was kind of pale-faced last week, so he's been pretty weak. Want to remember him in prayer. And then Ralph and Juanita Cook had texted me too. Both of them are feeling ill, lifting them up in prayer. And then Betty Smith and uh, her son, uh, Donnie Jackson, and then also the girlfriend, uh, Terry Owens, that asked for prayer, not feeling well today, too. So these are some of the ones. And uh, again, praying for those that have had tests. Uh, Sandy Coulter, uh, she's not here today, is she? Rhonda Adams, waiting for results. Steve Hester, did you find anything yet, Steve? I got great results. Great, amen to that. Give the Lord a hand for that. And then uh, my stepmother, Maxine McClellan, had, had to go to ER and ended up in the hospital this week passing blood. Uh, she is probably going to go to, she is doing better, not doing that no more, but uh, probably going to rehab up in court tomorrow or maybe even today. So, uh, Clint Kincaid, tell me how your back's doing. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> He's lifted a lot of surgeries and it had to what I've seen didn't work that well. This is the best I think I've seen for him, so we praise God for that. Uh, still praying for Everett Murphy that had some procedures. Charlie Gibbons is with his son now up there in the Knobs, staying with him for the moment, so we want to keep him in prayer. I don't know that they ever said that he had a mini stroke or a light stroke, but that was the effects of it. His left side is still pretty weak. Not totally out, but just weak, so we need to pray for him. And then for Lana Ashburn, it's had some surgery, and I think it's kind of went south on her. You need to continue prayer. I've got a list of other people that will be mentioned here in a little bit, but those were some of the ones that I wanted to start with. And uh, again, is there any guests or visitors with us, your first time ever? Carrie, it's good to see you back here today. Give her a big hand this time. Anybody else, visitors or guests, if you haven't been here for a while? I see some of the bikes back here, but I think they've been back and forth, some of the different ones, but we appreciate them. Give them a hand. 
Alex Cove. And I think we've got that covered. Again, it's good to see Donna. It's good to see you back here today. Hopefully, you're feeling better too. So, just uh, keeping everybody in prayer. But anyway, those are the announcements. Again, those that are watching, listening, this is our 10:45 a.m. morning worship service, and we do have Sunday school at 10 a.m. and Sunday our church service on Sunday night at 6. Choir practice tonight, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. for choir practice tonight. And uh, again, come back and be with us if you can tonight. I know that we've changed the clocks, and I know that that makes it terrible for some. I get it. I understand. So we love you to be here if you can. We, we understand that. Uh, that's why we got a YouTube. You can watch that and be a part of that. But we, uh, if you can, you can. If you can't, you can. We totally get that. So uh, enough of my intervention with all that. I think that's good enough. How many's had a birthday this week? Any birthdays? Plants had a birthday even during this time, praise God. Thank you. Yeah, Plant and Cade, anybody else? Raise your hand, Darlene. Roberts. Darlene Roberts, okay. Let's sing happy birthday to them this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. in the church okay no anniversaries so anybody been in and out of the hospital that we haven't mentioned this morning Maxine McClellan's the only one that I know that been in the hospital that stayed uh, some have been in and out so but anyway uh, certainly just want to pray for all and I think with all that being said we're going to ask Kevin Davis if he'll stand he's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance when he's finished Steve will lead us in music I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. All right, made standing. Uh, I don't think I've ever said anything, but I appreciate Sissy running the laptop and her replacement, Tracy, who is her substitute. Makes it a whole lot easier on all of us. And uh, just to stress that November is Join the Choir Month. A lot of extra bonuses. A lot of extra bonuses if you join in, in November. So sing this chorus with me. I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'm gonna shout, shout, shout. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna shout. I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna shout, praise the Lord. I ain't gonna 
Are you warmed up? Yeah. Ready to sing? Yeah. 506 in your hymn book. 506.
the ones that do the anointing that are here today and those that can help. We're going to go ahead and have you ready for prayer at this time. <laughs> Mike, it's good to see you here this morning. How's your uh, the, He's Timmy? To have surgery right now is supposed to be for mom morning. Okay, he hasn't had that yet. I didn't no, know. No, they, sure. they was going to. They had some other stuff to do. Yeah. Morning first. Talking about Timmy Guthrie, we had that on our prayer chain, asking for prayer. And talking about, and that's also Van Smith's cousin. It's your lady friend's uh, brother, and then Van Smith's uh, cousin. So and there are some others that told me they had something that was related to him too. So, uh, but anyway, that's Timmy Guthrie. We want to keep in prayer. I mentioned these others that we want to keep praying for. Uh, thank you. Sandy Coulter, or Rhonda Adams, and also for, again, we're glad Steve's doing better. We're still praying for all the stuff that he's been messing with. Uh, still praying for my stepmother, Maxine McClellan. Uh, for those that have had surgeries, Clint Kincaid, Amber Murphy, uh, Charlie Gibbons, not necessarily surgery, but he's went through some stuff with a possible uh, mini stroke or light stroke. Still praying for Lana Ashburn. Man. And uh, as again, as I mentioned, Mike Perry over a possible fusion here before long, hopefully for him. Uh, still praying for Rosie Stratton. I don't see her or Tom either one here today. Uh, Shirley and Ernie Rush. Uh, Doug and Willie, as I mentioned earlier, had texted us also. Ronnie Gregory, keeping him in prayer. Uh, still for Charlie and Janet Jones, lifting them up in prayer. Both of them had health issues. Uh, for Eddie and Martha, help. Dustin and Annie, it's good to see you here today. Just keeping them in prayer. Uh, lifting them up, but uh, also uh, Dallas and David and him for their family. Uh, Penny Shields and L.J. Compton still doing good. My mother Faye Wiggum and my stepdad Larry keeping them in our prayers. Caleb Prince as well as Tana too, mother, and also for uh, Barb Garrett, Martha Rollwork, and again Patty go forth, Judy Hall, uh, Stephen Bonnie and Shaw. It's good to see them in here today. Uh, Joanne Hatcher, and again, that's Steve's sister, correct? Yeah, she's uh, having some back issues, yeah. and uh, back. she's had a big back problem. Okay. Still for Gary and Tracy Higdon and her mother, Iris. Uh, David and Melanie Wire. Uh, Terry Owens, the ones that I was telling you that texted us earlier for Donnie Jackson and Betty Smith. Still praying for uh, Eric's uh, dad, Paul Lohart, keeping him in our prayer. Hobart Davis, we're going to keep him in prayer. we got to get him straightened out here before long. He's having some rough time, but we're going to pray that God will show him the right path. Still praying special prayer for uh, all those dealing with uh, cancer and heart problems. We're going to lift each and every one of them up. Uh, pray for uh, Pam Shear and also Paula Keith that had some diabetes problems here recently. Uh, for all the children that's been premature and some of the babies that's been dealing, and little two-year-olds that's been dealing with cancer, been a, a list of them also. And for Karen Grace, Karen and Chris Grace, and my wife Sandra, Wayne's wife Janet, and then David's wife Melody. I'm still praying for Stella and Boyd Henry. I don't see her here today, but also their daughter Pam Owens. And uh, I mentioned uh, the ones with cancer situations. I want to pray for all those and those dealing with heart issues, lifting them up in prayer as well. So, again, we've got a host of different ones. Still praying for revival in Israel, peace of Jerusalem, unspoken, shut-ins, caretakers, each other and families, America, the elections, our schools, and salvation above all. And again, we could go on, like I say, I've mentioned probably 50. I could mention another 50. And I, if I missed you, I, I don't mean to. I want to pray for everybody. but. We all need prayer, that's for sure. Uh, prayer request from you all up here, Sissy. Oh, salvation for my family. Amen. Others? Brenda? Yeah, for uh, my siblings, my brother's having his hip surgery Thursday morning. Got to be over at 5 30. Is that Fred? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he had to get five pints of blood with iron mm. Thursday of this week so that he could do the surgery next Thursday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. then, don't know where the blood's going, but it's Mm. Yeah, that don't work too good for sure. Other prayer requests? Anybody else up oh. here? Oh, I, I forgot. Mike, 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 Mike is paternal grandmother passed away, so I pray for him and his family. Okay. Others? Prayer requests? Gary? Uh, for elections, for church, and for all those who are in pain. Absolutely. 
See? Uh, so. Family, children, sister traveling, and uh, thank you so much for praying for me and Bonnie. Other prayer requests up here, anybody? Prayer request down here on this side, Ronnie. Pray for my son. Okay. Steve? Uh, I'm having a real back problem. Somebody's going to probably help me up with this dismissed. A lot of people having back problems, and these and others, but absolutely. Other prayer requests? Loris? Mike Ed. Okay, other prayer requests, Donna? For my granddaughters and their father. They can get that family unit back. Okay. Danny? My family. Okay. Other prayer requests on this side? Anybody else? Like her, Sheila? For our business and for Ms. Okay. Anybody else on this side? Yes, Shirley? Absolutely. Anybody else on this side? Prayer request over here, Mike. My grandchildren, myself, family, friends, for Timmy, and a couple of them. Okay. Others? Serena? Uh, me and Todd are taking our friend with a severe illness to Illinois this weekend, and we're going to be doing like a day trip. So please pray for our travels because it's four hours away from here and back. And then uh, I had a classmate pass away. She was only 31. And the doctors, she was bedridden, and the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on with her. She was a Christian. Um, she's actually the aunt of the baby that I've been praying for with the heart defect. That baby uh, had another surgery and is actually doing okay, but uh, it's going to be in the hospital for six months. So, you know, first year of its life, it's going to be in the hospital. So just pray for that whole family. Okay. Kevin? Yes, just please vote. Amen. All I'm going to say. Pray for who you're voting for and pray. Absolutely. Todd, Donna? Uh, yes, Lincoln and my mother have been sick this week. So they oh. are getting better, praise God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to say I hope they keep getting better. Amen. And I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to throw that in there, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Others, uh, prayer requests? Anybody else? Back here, Michelle? Family and friends for our country and vote and for our elections. Absolutely. Oh, and, uh, pray for our water too, Naylon. Well, it's your water too. But <laughs> we did test it and it's not good, Naylon. So. I, yeah, I drank mine out of the bottle. So <laughs> I know, okay. I know. Other prayer requests? Anybody else? How many would love to lift the hands for yourself or someone else? Again, oh, God sees our hands. As we stand this morning, if anybody like to come down and be anointed for yourself, have hands laid on you, I'd be glad to do that at the end. Uh, and you've been anointed, that's fine. But if you want hands laid on you, you come down here, I'll do that also. By Jesus, I
physical, emotional, whatever it is, Lord, I pray for each and every person, Lord. I, I pray, God, for your hands upon every heart and every mind, every physical body, Lord. Lift up and move upon all of us, Lord. There's so many prayer requests, Lord, for those that have had tests that are waiting for results, for those that are, uh, had surgeries and are, are wanting to be healed in Christ's name, Lord. We pray for them. Uh, we pray, God, for those that are having back problems, those that are having hips and necks and, and other pains in their bodies. We pray for healing, Lord, for each and every one. I pray for Hobart back here, Lord, as he's been dealing with a cold for some time now. I pray that your healing stripes would be upon him. Uh, for Timmy Guthrie, Lord, with his heart, we pray, God, for healing upon him. I pray for our stepmother, Maxine McClellan, uh, for healing for her still in the hospital. I pray for her journey to the, the rehab to go well, whether today or tomorrow. Uh, we continue to pray for others that have had surgeries. Thank you for Clint Kincaid doing good. Pray that it'll stay that way in Jesus' name. Pray for Everett Murphy and, and Charlie Gibbons, Lord, that you'll lift him back up. And Lana Ashburn, it's uh, having some problems coming back on her. I pray, God, you're healing. For Mike Perry over here, I pray that God, he's going to be able to get a fusion here in the near future and, and be able to be touched by Jesus Christ. I pray for all the ones that have been mentioned here this morning. I pray for our families, our loved ones. I pray for our country. I pray for their elections. I pray for the right people in, the wrong people out. I continue to pray for the little children, Lord, whether they're babies, premature, or, or dealing with sickness in their body, or whether they're a couple years old, however they are. I pray that you'll touch them in Jesus' name, Lord, for the glory of your kingdom, Lord. I pray for the ones that text me this morning and tell us they couldn't be here because of sickness today, that you'll touch them, Lord, for Ralph, Juanita, and for Doug and Willie, and for Terry and Donnie and Betty. I pray for them in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you'll touch them, Father God. I pray for those that have been sick and suffering that healing would come about Lord and good things would come forth God I, I pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem Lord I pray for our church services here today Lord I, I pray God that good things would come forth I pray for salvation above all I pray for the youth convention that's coming up this month also uh, for chili supper and Thanksgiving services and stuff I pray that all these things, even up into the next month where we have Christmas and New Year's, that all things are going to glorify and honor you with us as the body of Christ. Pray, God, for a hedge of protection of over our, our loved ones and our families. There are so many things going on in the world today, Lord. God, we ask for angels to be encamped about. There are some that are traveling, Lord. You will watch over and protect them. And again, Father, bring them back safely, Lord, or take them to their destination safely if it's their headed that way. Again, Lord, I pray for all the hands that went up here today, Lord. God, we want to continue to, to pray, Lord, and uh, lift up Brother Steve down here for his back. I pray that you're going to bring forth healing to him in Jesus' name, Lord. And I pray for Mike over here, Lord, that, God, you're going to help him, Lord, with this, uh, again, the hurts and the pains that he has in his body, Lord. We just pray that you'll touch him from head to toe. And also for that friend and loved one of his, Lord. For that Timmy, Lord, that you're going to touch and move upon him, Lord. I pray for Brenda over here, Lord, for her brother that's having surgery. That everything's going to go well with that in Jesus' name, Lord. God, be with all these needs and be with this service today. Bless and anoint every life here in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. My Jesus, my love.
may be seated. Give the Lord a hand this morning. He wants to do the offering stuff. Let me come on up here. Over here, I'm sure. Let's pray over the tithe and offering today. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to give to the work of the Lord. We pray your blessings upon the tithe and offering. For those that give as well as those that have not to give, may all things be done to your glory and honor by us as your children. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is my Bible. This is the Word of God. It is a lamp to my feet. It is a light to my path. These words the height of my heart that I might not sin against God. All Scripture is inspired of God. Blessed are the doers and not the hearers only. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Give Dallas a hand as she comes up to do our stuff. Desde la onda de espera y redente, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father was over the way, and prepared us to dwell in His And the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. And the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. We shall sing on the beautiful shore. The melody and song of the birds, and the spirit shall soar in the wind. Not a sign for the birds in the wind. And the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. And the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer the tribute of praise for the glorious people of this world and the blessing they call the day. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. Good job, Emily. Good job. 
going to Daniel chapter 3, but I'm going to read one verse, and Steve will put it up there, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. We all know it by heart. First of all, I'd like to say, you know, we're here today, and I think we all know there's an elephant in the room, don't we? Because I know what we're all thinking about this week. We're all thinking, how is the election going to turn out? How is it going to happen? You know, I want to entitle this message just so you know where I'm going at today. The lighthouse comes before the White House. Amen. I said the lighthouse comes before the White House. Amen. I said the lighthouse comes before the White House. Glory to God. You know, if Christians don't get that in our head, we're going to be a mess. Do I believe you ought to vote? I guarantee you I will this week. I'm patriotic too. But at the same time, I'm a born-again believer. How about you today, yeah, glory yeah, to God? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus is on the throne no matter who's in the White House, glory yeah, to God. Yeah, yeah. And again, if you're going to be discouraged, you need to be encouraged in the Lord today, glory to God. And realize that God's got a purpose and a plan for whatever happens. Again, that don't take away from our responsibility. We need to be about the business that God's given us. But at the same time, remember, but God is in supreme authority. This verse here says, Thou shall have what? No other gods before me. That word gods is a small g. That's talking about thou shall have no other authorities before me. You're going to have people that are going to be in authority that you're not going to agree with. Some you're not going to like. Some you're going to be totally ashamed and afraid of. But I gotta tell you, we still need to make sure that we don't have no other gods Amen. before Him, Lord of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You've heard the old saying, I don't mix politics and religion. Can I tell you something? They're the same thing. They're a way of thinking. I don't argue about it, but as far as talking, there's still a way of thinking. You're gonna to have to deal with your choices and stuff. And again, I don't agree with arguing about it because all you do is put a wound closer and closer with each other. What I want to do ask it, are Republicans going to like Democrats next week? Are Democrats going to like Republicans or Independents? And I'm talking about loving them because you're their brothers and sisters in Christ. Just because somebody don't vote or feel the same way you do. You say, well, if you do this or do that, folks, I put all that aside. You can tell me what you believe and all that. Folks, I'm talking about our Christian faith today. I'm talking about keeping our heart out for each other. <coughs> again, I want you to be as patriotic as you can be. I, I, again, when it comes to voting, can I tell you what to do? No, I can't. But I can tell you something you ought to do. Pray. Yeah. Study your Bible. Study the issues. And then what do you do? Pray, pray, and pray again. Glory to God. And then listen to your heart, not your pocketbook. God, show me my heart about the situation. Show me my heart about issues. Show me my heart about what's going to stand up right, what's going to stand. Because I've got to tell you right now, you've already got your mind molded, made up anyway. I can't change your mind. But God can change our hearts. That's what we really need. And again, I don't want us to despise each other because we're not the right this, that, or the other. You know, it's as bad in the church as it is in the world. You know, we get the Republicans and Democrats. What about the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterian, the Church of the God, the Assemblies of the God? If I remember right, if I say I love God, I've got to love other people too, don't I? Amen. Don't have to agree with them, I assure you that. And again, as far as voting, like I said, pray and study and make sure what, what you're looking at is lining up with what you believe in your heart. That's all I can tell you. Because I know your mind's already made up. I'm not going to change it. I hear preachers get in the pulpit and think they're going to change your mind. They're crazy. All you do is run people off and get people angry and mad at each other. I, I've pointed at things I disagree with. I've pointed at things I do agree with. And again, you've got to look at the issues that people stand for when it comes to politics. And when it's right, it's right. When it's wrong, it's wrong. And that's what you've got to hold yourself together with. And, and like I say, when we talk about religion and politics, the best thing for us to talk about is relationship. Amen. 
And I'm talking about a relationship with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That's where it's got to boil down to. And again, I've been in all the arguments. I've been in all the frustrations. And all that does is put a wedge between us. I want you to love me come Wednesday as much as you did Tuesday. Whether I vote Republican or Democrat or Independent, I want you to love me and I want to love you too. I may not agree with you. You may not agree with me. But can we still love each other? We call ourselves believers, Christians. And again, I can sit here and give my opinions and tell you about why you should, shouldn't this. And again, study your words. Study the Scriptures. Find out what's right and wrong and, and these different ones. Study. Don't just say, I'm going to do this because they did it for years. Study. And pray. Exodus again, 23, 20 and verse 3 says, Thou shalt have another guys before me. And that includes leaders. That's what that's actually talking about. Can I tell you that Paris and Trump both, neither one of them are the Messiah? That's right. Neither one of them are the Messiah. Neither one of them will get you to heaven. I'm telling you right now, regardless. And again, I do have my beliefs on how I'm going to vote, and you do too. But I'm not arguing about that. What I'm talking about is we got to hold each other up, glory to God. And I, and I got to tell you, if your person don't get in there next week, you know what you need to do on Wednesday? You need to pray for them, glory to God. If your person does get in there, you know what you need? You need to pray for them, glory to God. Whether it's in the presidential, whether it's in government, whatever it is, you need to pray for them. Our Bible commands us to pray for those in authority. You know that? Magistrates and, and all the different ones and those that are over top of us. And, and again, I'm again not trying to sway you. Like I say, you've already got your mind made up, you already know, and I hope you've done what I've said. Pray and study and pray and pray again. Hopefully praying and fasting a few times maybe, but again, that's up to you. I want you to turn with me to Daniel chapter 3 this morning. Daniel chapter 3. And we've talked about Daniel, how he ended up in Babylon. Do you remember what Jesus said when they wanted to make him a king? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, if it was, my people would fight for it. When it comes to my Christian faith, my kingdom is in heaven. When it comes to America, I'm going to be patriotic. But I want my Christian faith in years to come first above all. Because there's some places in Scripture that they had some terrible politics. And this is one of them. And I believe some things in the end times leading up to this also. But at the same time, I'm talking about during that time, like 580-something B.C., uh, at the time that this was talked about, uh, during the time that Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, remember they were in prison, they were tucked into Babylon because Jerusalem was sieged and burned and everything else. And do you know why Jerusalem had that happen to them? Go back and study all the way back to Hezekiah. Remember that guy that, you know, prayed and God uh, lifted him up and God added 15 years to him? I'm not for sure that was the greatest thing that ever happened for him. Because I'm not for sure where he ended up. I hope he made it. But at the same time, he kind of got some crazy things going on by the time he had one of the worst children that ever was born as far as a king. But nonetheless, at the same time, God kept telling him to straighten out or God's going to give him a wicked oath. Wicked leader. God's going to put him in a position. He wasn't even going to give him a wicked leader. He was going to put him under oppression. He was going to put him under slavery. How many of you know if you keep turning your back on God, God's going to allow some things to happen once in a while. That's right. And it may not always be the happy camper that we want it to be. But again, in Daniel chapter 2, you know, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he seen this big old statue and the, the head of it was made out of gold. And guess who it represented? Nebuchadnezzar. Man, he was the head honcho. And not only was he the head, he let it go to his head. Because in this third chapter, we're reading again, I'm skipping over a lot of stuff for the second time. But it says, verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, boy, we've got some hard names in the Bible, don't we? But Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and breadth. And again, when we're talking about a score, we're talking about 20, 20, 40, 60 with the three. So again, a cubit is a time and a half of that. So you know, you've got about 90 feet tall. And the breadth there, it was six cubits, is about nine feet wide. 
And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then all these ones, I'm not going to read through them every time. When I got finished setting it up, then it says in verse 4, Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations and language, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. You gotta bow down to worship. Folks, we need to watch what's happening in our world today because we're going to be in one of these fixes one of these days. We're going to have to decide who we're going to worship. But anyway, again, this, this king said, hey, you know, I've got this head of gold and, and that was a dream and I've set up this image. You're going to have to bow down and worship it. But in verse 6 says, And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of of a burning, fiery furnace. We all remember that story. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of all this, and again, I'm not going to read every one of this, uh, and fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, verse 8, Wherefore, at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. You've always got somebody watching you, don't you? And Chaldeans come and said, Hey, Nebuchadnezzar, let me tell you about them old Jewish boys. <laughs> they're not bowing down worshiping your image. They're, they're not going to do it. They, they said, No, we're not going to be a part of that. Where there's bowing down or sitting down. You know, when I think about that, I think about when we say the, the American Legion and stuff and people get down and won't stand up when they can. We've got some weird acting circumstances, don't we? You've got to decide what you stand for and what you believe in, don't you? And them old boys said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to bow before your image. I'm not going to do it. It's not going to happen. Nebuchadnezzar warned him. He said, you know, here's the deal. If you don't do what I say, I'm going to give you a chance. But if you don't do it, I'm going to throw you in that burning that fiery furnace and it's going to be a mess. And I'm going to skip down to verse 19. I don't want to read all these verses here. And they, they refused to. Matter of fact, let's back up just a little bit, Steve. I'm sorry. Go back to verse 16. I want to read this also. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king when he told him that, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and He will deliver us out of thy hand, O King. But if not, but if not, be it known unto thee, O King, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. We're not going to bow down to your bunch of garbage. We're not going to give in. Regardless of who's in the White House, regardless of who's in politics in another country, regardless, we're not going to bow down. Have you got that kind of courage? It's easy to say in church, isn't it? Oh, yes, glory to God. But what about when you, the rubber hits the road, when you've got your head on the block, when you've got you know, guns pointed at you? You know, Some of you have seen that, but most of us haven't. What are you going to do when it comes to that? Are you able to say, as Shadrach... Was she, uh, Again, these three Hebrew children said, you know, we're not going to bow down. And whether our God, and again, let me read, but be it known, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we shall not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace. One seven times more. It's 800 degrees. We're going to make it 5,000 degrees. You know, burning's burning, isn't it? But his fury had got that hard. Torture could be worse in some areas than it can others, can it? 
One, time, one seven times more than it, than it was want to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty man, the biggest, bravest man that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hoses, their hats, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They died taking them up there to the punishment. The man that he had commanded to do that. And it says in verse 3, or 23, that these three men fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. I'm not reading all the words, forgive me, but I'm just trying to get us through this. And it says in verse 24, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not, I said, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. How many of you know when you go through the burning furnace fire of life that the Son of God will go with you? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said whether he delivers us out of your hand or not, I don't know about this burning, about this fire, but he's going to deliver our soul, glory to God. We're going to be alright because we're not going to bow down to any images. We're not going to bow down to that false God. We're not going to give in to it. Folks, remember that when you think about what our country's going through. Remember that when you think about what the world's going through right now. And again, I'm not trying to solicit folks. I'm trying to get you to put your heart in the right place. Am I concerned about what's going on in America? Yes, but I'm more concerned about what's going on in our heart toward Jesus, folks. Amen. Are we ready for, to, to meet our Maker regardless of what everything else goes around us? Man, I hope for the best at the elections, but I also hope for the best and the best and the greatest of the best in our hearts for Christ. Like I say, none of the contestants, whether it's in the presidential or anything, they're not messiahs. Again, pray and study about that, but at the same time, remember, Jesus is still sitting on the throne, praise God. And by the time you get to verse 29, Steve, if you want to skip down there, Nebuchadnezzar has done seen what's happened. He's seen how God has given these three men favor. And he says, Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall made up, be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sword. Amen. Our God is awesome, praise God. <laughs> Do you serve an awesome God today? Amen. Is our God able to make a way, glory to God? Amen. It says, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Even though that government was wicked, they still stood up for what's right. Folks, we got to remember that. And again, do our best in our patriotic way, but at the same time, remember God's on the throne. And don't hate people because of their way of thinking. Some people are thinking different thinking. I understand that. Some people are not as educated. And I'm talking about they're not as understanding of what's going on as others. And maybe some of us are, are one way or another. We're not. But for us to, you know, hate each other and have strife and bitterness, something's wrong with the body of Christ, isn't it? We need to hold each other up, glory to God. What's the cure for some of this? How about 2 Chronicles 7.14? If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land to save their nation. I don't know about that turning from our evil ways yet, do you? I think we've got some work to do on that, don't you? 
You know, the Bible also says in Psalms 33, 12, it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Is God the God of our nation? Glory to God. Is He not the leader that's in charge? Yes. And again, if we allow other leaders to be our gods, then we're the ones that fail, aren't we? We're the ones that, that malfunction for sure. Turn with me one more place. Uh, Revelations chapter uh, 2. Y'all want to stone me to death? <laughs> he didn't tell me who to vote for. He didn't give me the right one yet. I think most of you know which way I sway, but that's besides the fact it's not about that. It's about you've got a, an opportunity to do what your heart directs and guides you. But here in the book of Revelation chapter 2, God's talking to the seven churches of Asia. And Jesus is actually speaking in these red words if you've got your Bible looking at it. It says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. These candlesticks represent the churches. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles or are not and hast found them liars. This is the perfect church, right? I mean, we're doing all the discernment. We're doing all this great stuff. I, I mean, man, we're laboring for the Lord. We're doing great. And verse 3 says, And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Man, you're working for the Lord. You're doing a great job. <coughs> and then verse 4 says, Nevertheless, and we all know this story, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. What? Because thou hast done what? Thou hast left thy first love. Wow. You can be in church. You can go there every time the doors are open. And you can be in all the religious things and all this other stuff. But if your heart is not the right way with God, it's all in vain. You say, why would people do those things? For prestige, for money, for whatever. Filthy liqueur, the Bible talks about in the last days people would do stuff. But at the same time, if you're not doing what you're doing because you love the Lord, folks, something's wrong. Uh, again, when you're thinking about what you're going to do this week, if you're not doing it because you love the Lord, then it's in vain anyway, isn't it? Whatever you do, and, and word or deed, you're to do all to the glory of God, aren't you? Again, God needs to be number one in our life. It says, Nevertheless, I have someone against thee because thou hast left <coughs> Thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Remember what we read when we first had to see, put it up on the screen. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Don't let anything come between you and your relationship with Christ today. Don't let anything, you know, uh, again, we're talking about this week, you know, the worst thing that I can see is in the church being division. I'm not talking about, we're divided with the world already, I hope, but I'm talking about in the church because we don't think alike all the time. Some people, uh, again, are more mature in certain things and issues. And again, I don't know who's who. God does. Maybe somebody knows more than I do with their mature. And maybe I do. I don't know, but I know God does. He knows everything, doesn't He? He's got it. Me and Jesus has got it all worked out, right? <laughs> He's going to figure it all out. And verse 5 says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and do what? There's that dirty word, repent. <laughs> Man, I thought that was supposed to be out of there by now. That ain't supposed to be in the book no more, is it? My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you add to this book, God will add to the plagues. If you take away, God will take your name out of the book of life. Read back here in Revelation 22, 18 and 19, I think it is. But at the same time, repent and do thy first works. The first thing you did when you got saved was what? I walked little ladies across the street. I cleaned the snow off their front porch. I, I, I washed their cars. I did their dishes. What did you do when you first got saved? You fell in love with Christ, didn't you? Glory to God. You had a relationship with the Son of God, didn't you? That's what falling in love with God is about. It's not about 
and your good works indeed, they do follow, they should follow. Not because you have to, but because you want to. It, it, it says, Repent and do thy first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate. And there's been some footnotes in Bibles in the previous past how they believed that this was actually when they were trying to put a clergy over laity. Does that sound familiar? In other words, the clergy was like God. If the preacher or the priest says it, that's the way it's got to be. <laughs> the preacher and the priest is the only one that can interpret Scripture, right? Something's wrong with that picture, isn't it? He said, I, I'm glad you hate that because I hate it too. Because it's not about you depending on a one-man band. It's about you depending on God. Amen. It's about you depending on His directions and guidance. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the, unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I have decided to follow Jesus. How about you today? Amen. Let's stand up today. It's a little bit early. Give you time to go vote. Do what? Amen. I will have no other gods before me. Praise God. And again, let's let's get along with each other. Even though we don't agree on everything, let's make sure we hold each other up. And let's hold up whatever happens in our country. Again, I've got my desires and you do too. And I know what I want to happen and what I don't want to happen. But at the same time, I'm going to trust Jesus come high, yep. hell or high water. How about you? Yes. I'm going to trust Jesus no matter who gets Amen. in the White House or who gets in the government position or whoever gets in something else. Yes. I'm going to trust God. Amen. It doesn't mean I'm going to like it in my flesh, but it means I'm going to love God through it all. And I'm right. going to love people. And i got right. you. Man, I, I've been in that, that thing. I've been in that monster where you get all caught up. If you don't think the way I do, I don't. And man, you can put such a stench between people. Man, I've got to love you whether you love me or not. I've got to love you whether you feel the same way about scriptures as I do or not. Today, if you're here and you don't know where you stand at with God, I didn't say you didn't know where you stand at with the voting procession. I said, do you know where you stand at with God? Do you remember that song that's been sung? I thank God for the White House. <laughs> mean White House. That's not the way that song goes, is it? I thank God for the White House, glory to God. Amen. That's the one I'm talking about. That's the one I need. But if you're here today and you don't know where you stand at with Christ, that's the major thing in your life here today. I'm going to vote for Jesus. How about you? Amen. I'm going to stand up for Christ. How about you? Amen. If you have need to, to come and serve, to, to pray or seek the Lord, you're welcome. And if you're here today and you don't know where you stand or you're watching and listening another time, a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Give me salvation. I trust in the blood of Christ. And I know that Jesus died for my sins. And I know that He was resurrected. I believe that in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And I'm ready for heaven. I'm saved and I'm ready for heaven. And to run out of time, just Jesus save me. I need you. I need you more, more, more. I need you more than yesterday. I need you more than anything. How about you? I need you more than what this old world could do or anything else. I need Jesus. I want Him to be that part of you're here today and you have need of prayer you want somebody to pray for you with you if you just want to pray on your own these altars are here for you steve if you want to finish this with a song here today i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow jesus i have decided to follow Jesus, no, no turning back, no turning back, the world behind me, the world before me, the world behind me, 
Lord, today. Yes, sir. We know that your name's in the book. Praise God. Praise God. Remember this week, the men's meeting tomorrow, the women's meeting Tuesday. Remember to vote on Tuesday. Again, pray and vote, pray and pray and pray again, right? If you've already voted, pray, you got the right. But either way, pray that our relationship with Christ gets stronger more than anything. And pray that we can love one another whether we agree or not sometimes. Don't forget the chili supper on the 15th and don't forget the Thanksgiving service on the 17th. Don't forget our Wednesday night service. There's a special on Wednesday night too. <laughs> just like the choir. But anyway, we're going to close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you today, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this time. Uh, we thank you for God being a good God and loving and caring for us. And I just pray today, Lord, that you'll continue to show us your path of righteousness, show us your love and encouragement, help us to be the people of God you've called us to be, and forgive us for any failures. God, be with us in a special way, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Choir practice tonight at 5, church service at 6. Come back and be with us again. God bless